Hello, ma'am. Good afternoon again. Can we, can we start the interview na, ma'am? Sure. Yeah. So, first of all, I want to introduce myself to you again. I am Paula Kachine Tumban, a fourth-year um, interior design student from University of San Carlos. And my activity partner... Noel. Yes. Can can you hear us clearly lang, ma'am? Yeah, I can. Ah, yeah. Um, can can I ask first if you're really from Manila or you're um born in Cebu or ah, okay. No, uh, I'm really from Manila. So oh. I've lived here all my life. Ah, okay, ma'am. So hello. Yeah. Can we can we start it now? Yeah, sure. Okay. So, um, question number one. Um, among all the possible professions, why did you choose to be an interior designer? Um, okay. So, it wasn't like a quick process. So, when I finished high school, I was leaning towards the arts. So, I was choosing between fine arts or industrial design or interior design. So, my mom has a few condos here in Manila and then she waited for me to finish schooling before she fixed it up. So during my SEM break, she would ask me to help her choose finishes and mm. all of this, um, anything project related. So that was basically my summer job ah. for her. And then, so along the process, I enjoyed it. And then mm. I asked her, like, do you think this is something I can do as a profession. And then she said, why don't you check out interior design? So I started searching for schools and then there was one nearby me, which is PSID, if you're familiar. So um, I found out that they don't have like a four-year course. So I had to go to Benil, uh, La Salle Benil, yes. to take minors and then majors in PSID. Yeah. So, because I wanted something that was a mix of creativity and a little bit of problem solving, mm -hmm. rather than fine arts is more of like just pure expression, yeah. and you're just using one medium, whereas in interior design you're doing like you're dealing with space through the space, mm -hmm. which is more interesting. Yes. So you're a family of artists, ma'am. Um, just me and my mom. My oh. mom took fine arts. Ah, I see. And Aside from her, I'm the only one who took something else creative. Mm. So you, yeah. um, correct me if I'm wrong, so you graduated from University of La Salle, Benilde? Benilde, yes. Ah, yeah. okay, ma'am. Okay, second question, please. So for the second question, ma'am, since childhood, were you fond of art, drawing, or design? Uh, yeah, yes, definitely. Uh, so... Amongst us siblings, um, I was the only one that pursued anything individual uh, art side. So my mom used to enroll us in like art classes mm. and painting classes, anything like that, and then culinary also. So uh, it's something that I never really grew out of. Even during high school, during my free time, I would paint and draw. And mm. I was looking for something like a job where I, wherein I can continue that. Mm. So that's that's why I chose interior design. So since you were young, you were like the kid who draws like in random papers, yeah, yeah, and even like pottery, or mm. painting. Even like when it comes to baking, I would decorate things. Oh, <laughs> even in cupcakes or yeah. cakes. Oh, I see. Okay. Um. So how did you become what you are right now, ma'am? Like. It, like um in terms of like from graduating to taking board exams uh, okay. yes so, um, right after i graduated from psid i just waited for another graduation in Benil two, mm. two times it. and then after that um i, I was at Crockwell if i should take a job or mm. a or firm take or somewhere design related uh, design sales mm. or I study for the board exam. So, um, I was already applying for jobs. Although they told me that if you apply for a job, 
you have to give your full time to them. Mm. And there's no more time, basically, to study for the boards. Right? You can't do two things at the same time. So I took a risk, and then I joined the... Uh, I studied for the board of exams mm. in a school here, a uh, review school here. And then that same year that I graduated, I took the boards. Right? So mm. at least um, once you take the boards, because it opens up more avenues for mm. you. Whereas if you don't take the boards, um, parang you can't practice on your own also. Mm. Uh, so you, after graduating, you immediately thought of taking the board exams, cause yeah. some cause like they think of um having a break first before taking the board uh, exam. So good for oh, you. Okay. Workaholic ako. Eh. Ah, that's so, why. I think it's also um better if you take the board exams right after you graduate, so your um true. memory is still fresh, right, ma'am? That's very true. Yeah, um, because the, um, if your goal is to take the board exam, mm. it's still a very academic route. Yes. So, right after college, um, design school, you mm. still remember all of your history, all of your materials, mm. right? And whereas if you work uh, after that, your mind is already elsewhere. Yeah, it's rusty na. Mm, mm. Not rusty, but apparently you get caught up with client demands oh, or your process yes. demands. And then you don't have the time anymore or, mm. or the interest anymore to continue the board exam. Nice. That, that's what I feel now na, Now that I'm working. Mm. I'm glad that I did the board exam early. Mm. Because if I practice first or I work for others first and then I take the board exam, it wouldn't be the same. Yeah. Although you gain experience, but in the question and answer part, mm. it's almost like it's hard back to get back into your academic Mm. Uh, every day you're reading because yeah. when you start practicing you go around a lot mm. uh, job sites, supplier visits so it's more of like a routine yes so it's a tip for us to take the board exams immediately um yeah yeah especially if you plan to practice on your own mm. or you plan to have your own firm or something or partnership mm. then better take it after, right after college. Yeah. Okay, mom. Thank you. So, so when did you start your business? Uh, how was your journey? Uh, okay, so the first few years after you graduate and then you take the board exam, um, you could go like several routes. You could go um, work for a firm or you could try your own venture. And if you try your own venture, it's really, really hard <laughs> in the beginning because especially when you don't have, um, for example, support from your parents who are maybe in a construction company or in a furniture business, you're starting from scratch. So you have to have your own set of trusted suppliers, um, contractor, and the hardest of all is gaining the confidence and the trust of potential clients. So, um, it takes, that kind of thing, thing takes years to build. Mm. It's not like right out of college you can expect na may tatawag mo sayo and right. they're going to hire you at once, diba? So, mm. that was the most challenging. And um, right now, so far, um, I've only started actually really practicing around last year mm. because the previous years before that I was helping my parents flip their condos so helping them renovating it, renovate it and then try to rent it out and so that was more of like on the job training mm. before actually working for strangers and random mm. clients so so when you I when you took the board exam you passed man mom no Oh, thank or God. you took. Oh, <laughs> I don't want to congratulations to, to you, first ma'am. Time <laughs> first time you're a no, a first time taker, ra ma'am. Yes, yeah, I took it around 2016. Oh, yeah, okay. So, so after four years practicing now. So when you um when you knew when you knew that you passed um um did you like automatically um. Yeah do 
um, interior designing or you took a break or whatever? Um, right after the boards, mm. uh, I continued again. I did one more condo for my mm. mom. And then after that, I took a bit of a break. Um, mm. So I had a really hard time after that project. And yes. We chose a contractor. Mm. <laughs> so that that made all the difference. Yeah. Na, na hirapan ako in that, that project. Oh, so, so after that, I was considering other professions, mm. to be honest. So, and then um, I got my first break when someone contacted me online. Mm. And then from there, um, uh, she's, she referred me to her friends and then mm. one thing led to another. So it's really about keeping a good name. Mm, yes. Yeah. So that you get more referrals. Mm. So after that, so that was the first pro- project after you being licensed, ma'am. Like the first yeah, condo project. First, and then after that, for a random client. Uh, uh, so it started from... Months. So you already had um contractors, your own contractors, your own um people when you started the condo? Or it no, was no, you no. alone? Actually, when I started after my mom's home, mm. I was still in the process of looking for contractors and suppliers. Yeah. Actually it's a never ending process. Mm. <laughs> because sometimes you get old contractors or suppliers or right. something happened to their business, they mm. shut down the business. So in your whole profession practicing life, you'll always be looking for good suppliers and contractors. Mm. And it's really more about the relationship that you keep with them. Mm. Because they have to also know your work ethics. They have to know your preferences. And once they know that, it will be easier for you to practice. Uh, yes. Yeah. We have more of like a partnership. Mm. Yeah. So with you, um, have it, with you being a freelance, how did you get your capital, ma'am? Um... Freelancing actually is a very low capital mm. kind of profession. In a way. Yeah. Because um you don't need much unless you the only thing I basically invest in is software mm. or so that you can do nice renderings, right? And uh, if you want an office right away then you can have an office. But then me I choose to work from home because I don't wanna pay for rent and all mm. these things yet. Yeah. Right? So it's a very low capital kind mm. of work. Yeah. Right. So with um your work, ma'am, um like right now, do you already have your um official like let's say junior designer or senior designer or you still like work alone? You work everything? Well, it's a very um case to case basis. Mm. Some people right after college I have some classmates to say who want to do partner with other classmates, so they form their own like um, partnerships. Kind of. yes. But for me, I like working solo, mm. so um, I work alone right now. Yeah. And then sometimes I just uh, borrow my parents' secretary mm. <laughs> to do some purchasing for me or other leg like, work. Yeah. But otherwise, um, I'm still thinking right now if I'll hire an assistant or or if I'll partner with someone. But more likely, like to hire an assistant. Mm. But with with all the demands, ma'am, like, is it not um difficult? Now you're working alone. Now you don't have I other know, people. Yeah, it's very difficult mm. <laughs> at first, cause um when the pace is slow, like you have one or two clients, mm. it's manageable. Uh, yeah. But one like right now, I'm handling seven projects at the same time, mm, all wow. by myself. Oh. So how do you yeah, do that, like, ma'am? <laughs> So um, it, it takes a lot of time management mm. also, and to the point that you do sleep, you really do. Yes. And you have little time for anything else, personal life or mm. anything. So that's why I'm thinking if I should uh, hire an assistant mm. or, but you know, it's something that you should look at if you have steady clients, uh, then you can afford to mm. hire. But at this point, I'm still feeling my way. Mm. <laughs> so before I start hiring. I see, ma'am. So right now, I do everything myself. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Kudos to you, ma'am. To Max. How would you describe your design style as an individual? Design style? Um, so, me, because I'm focused more on 
comfort and more of like an, a casual look. So some people tend to lean towards um, luxurious kind of elegant interiors, but me more of like rustic and uh, more natural materials. But for me, always like number one is it has to be practical and easy to maintain. Because when you're in design school and then you submit your plates, it's all about who has the nicest plate, right? Right. Paganda, diba? Mm. Yeah, I know that. I know that feeling. Yes. And then, diba? So as long as you can present a nice plate, pass na ng grade mo. Mm. But in the real world, actually, um, it doesn't work that way. So, number one, it always there's the client's budget. So, Sometimes you design something very nice, tapos so hindi pala afford, right. or you can't execute it. Mm. So number two is it's always supposed to be highly personalized to the client. Mm. So whatever they ask for, that's what you have to give them. So you can't like impose na this is what I want, and mm. then at the end they're not happy with it. Mm. So when you do plates, kasi it's about what you want, de ba? Right. Yeah, yeah. But in reality, so, it's what the client in wants. In reality, it's it's not like that. And, mm. and the materials that you choose have to be like very sensitive. You have to be very very careful about it also. Mm. So sometimes the clients tell me, "Oh, Je, um, this material after two years, it it's worn out already." So then, from your client's feedback, you can know what works and what doesn't work. Mm. So yeah. Every, yeah, every project talaga guys like a learning experience. Mm. So um, you'll make mistakes right. for sure in for the sure. beginning, and with every project, yeah, you'll get better and better. Mm. And you'll discover your own style, also your strengths. Mm. But with um, with your style, um, like with what you said, ma'am, like it will depend on the client's like wants or needs. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, for example, like, personally, you like working with wood. Mm. Um, but your client says, no, I don't like wood. I don't right. I want, like, a sleek, contemporary style. Mm. Can you do that? I get a lot, a lot of mm. questions like that. Can you do a totally different style? Mm. Pwede naman. That's why they train us in design school for that. Mm. Uh, you should know all kinds of historical styles, diba? Mm. So, um, yeah, you have to be ready also to be flexible. Right. Yeah. So with uh no with designing mom your tip is like just be flexible and don't um just stick to what you think is your style because every client is a different um process and a yeah. different style. Yeah. For sure. Like sometimes um when a client wants something you'll disagree because it's personally not your style, right? Mm. So the good thing is like how to merge your style and their style. Right. So, halimbawa, um, if they like a color, maybe you can steer them towards uh, towards the direction of choosing a better color or better fabric. Mm. But never totally, you can't tell them na hindi right. Because they're not going to be happy. Mm. <laughs> gonna... So, was there ever a time na your style and what your client wants like clashed or like they opposed to what you like, ba, ma'am? Yes, yes. That's mm. one of the um, most difficult things to handle when mm. your styles clash. Mm. So all you do is listen to them and then um, steer them in the right direction. So me, mm. uh, I like more of neutral, toned down um, styles. Mm. And then if they like loud, uh, very vibrant styles, then mm. we, we meet somewhere in between. Or I have to reason out to them now why this doesn't work. Mm. So in your practice, you have to work on your convincing skills also, right. so, that can, mm. so that you can achieve like a total unified nice look. But sometimes they'll say, "Na parang oh, can we do this?" Can they get carried away? Mm. And, then, and then when you picture it in your head, tayo we can see it na, eh, na parang it's not gonna turn out nice, mm. <laughs> So you have to convince them na this is where we should. Need this. Mm. But have you tried, ma'am, na like they really pushed it na, no, I want this, I don't like your, ano, you should do my oh, own, no. I'm your client. Have you tried that kind yeah, of client? Yeah, no, wala, wala naman. Wala naman. Uh, That's why you have to 
pretty good at reasoning why. Right. And mm. once medyo you tap into their logic, then they'll, they'll believe you naman. Mm. Okay, ma'am. So, what um design services do you offer and what makes it different from the rest? Design services? Mm. Um, it's basically like the same. I start out with uh, measuring the place and then I give them pegs for like a design concept. Mm. And then after that, uh, we work on the 2D plans now. 3D plans, perspectives. And... Then I go as far as like sourcing and everything. Right. But I guess if you were to ask what makes me different. Like guess, what is your uh, edge, ma'am? It's more of the approach, I mm. guess, to, to design. So yes. uh, each designer has their own strengths. And uh, I guess uh, I guess I, I just listen a lot to what the client wants. And mm. I don't impose on them what I want. Mm. So at the end, uh, they all when I ask them for feedback, then they tell me na, well, thank you for listening to mm. our needs and uh, being sensitive to what we need rather than like imposing on them. Right. Mm. Okay, ma'am. Of course, approach, I guess. I mean, kanya kanya yan. Each designer has mm. approach. Right. So um, with your strength, you can say na it's not about your style but it's how you like deal with clients and how you approach their wants and needs yeah yeah mm. definitely because um all of us when we graduate the science school mm. um we're trained in terms of taste color combining things right i mean it's the standard thing that you learn right school. but when you're really practicing it's you that they're hiring and not mm. what they see right so it's all about integrity. No, no, it's true. <laughs> yes, it's really true. Yes. Uh, um, integrity. You have to have mm. that first. So, um, a lot of contractors will tell you, uh, "Can we just do a shortcut? Uh, mm. Can we just make it simpler, at the expense of your design?" Right. So it's up to you if you're going to give in, or if you're going to stand your ground and say, "No, this is the design that my client wants." And it's all about pleasing the client, then it. Mm. So it's up to where you stand there, and that's going to make you either a good designer or a mediocre designer. Right. Right. Cause we, um, can I just say, share, mom? Like we in our class, like we had um like an activity to pass. So there was this question, like, what's your edge? Like, what the, what makes you different? Like, for example, from another brand or from another designer? And wala lang, like I somehow related with your answer because that that was really my answer. Like, it wasn't um more of my style like it wasn't more of how i design um things but it's how on like it's how i approach the clients it's sorry, my can't hear you. i'm sorry hello oh okay. uh, yeah so like yeah so i related to you mom okay um my answer that time was like um it wasn't about my design but I, that makes me different from the other brands but it's how like it's my relation with the clients that yeah, makes yeah. it different. You know, that's, that's true because in your practice, mm. um, you can have all these ideas. Right. Design. In fact, okay, when you're looking for a designer and then you see their portfolio, mm. everyone has impressive portfolios, mm. right? It, I mean, the nicer the picture, then the more impressive. True. But what really sets one designer apart from another is in the deal of the when they talk to you mm. and you understand them and what they really need right and that's what makes you um, Different. a good design yeah. that, that sensitivity yeah it... to, yeah because it's not just about <laughs> making everything look nice, nice. But I mean right. if that were the case then oh sorry yeah. if that were the case then um, we're creating more of like generic designs mm. That, that just look nice, but it doesn't really please the client. Right. right. Yeah. So it's it's more of that the, the char- your own character mm. as a designer. Okay, ma'am. 
to mock him. <laughs> what can you say? How long have you been in the business? How long have I been in the business? Yes. Okay. Um, more or less practicing since after the board exam. So four years. Hmm. Four years. So with the um four years of practicing interior interior design, what was um the problems you encountered with your clients? Like, what was the major problem? Na like, it made you um. Uh, it like it kept you awake at night. <laughs> oh, a lot of things keep me awake at mm, night. Oh. <laughs> really. mm. So, because um, you get aside from problems in construction, if we're mm. just talking about clients, um, the number one is is how to set the expectation of your clients mm. because they always always ask you how much is this gonna cost. Mm. Right? Money is always the issue. So. Um, of course, we're supposed to come up with a figure, like let's say, one hundred thousand mm. for everything. And then there comes a point that along the way, you think you're going to exceed a hundred thousand, mm. and then you have to explain to them how and uh, why why we went over budget mm. or like that, and that causes me a lot of stress mm. uh, because their expectation is this much long, mm. and then all of a sudden we have to pay more. Mm. So, um, so far, naman, I've been lucky na no client has really been difficult. Mm. It's more of how to manage their expectations. Mm. So, it, you're really lucky, ma'am, considering na you work alone, but everything, I mean, not everything is smooth, but like everything goes like accordingly. Oh, uh, another thing pala with clients, mm. like if you get very very uh discerning clients because mm. there are some clients that uh, we give them they're happy with, yeah. and then there are some clients that are never happy you, mm. you know what i mean yeah so the, every little thing to nitpick mm. and then you end up like almost fighting with your contractor because they don't want to keep going back mm. and fixing these small things yeah so and for example standards like for you um this is already okay. Mm. Like for example, a paint job's already okay, but in the eyes of your client, it's not okay. So, and then it, you go to the point of like beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. Mm. Uh, what is really okay for them? Uh, what for you is not okay for them. You know? mm. and, yeah. So have you tried like um, having a fight with your contractors or your suppliers or wala na man ma? Yeah. Oh yeah, many times. Oh, many times. <laughs> many times like if they're late or so, um, that's why over time mm. um, I've stopped working with a few few of them um. because um, it they refuse to really deliver mm. what they said, for example, or they have problems with labor and then they can't deliver. Mm. You no, know, many many problems like that. Um. So yeah, the, you will definitely fight with your contractor mm. one one or another right um so like with problems of course um there comes um your favorite project so what has been your favorite project so far and why like can you share specifically like if if it's commercial or residential um honestly i are along the years i've realized that i enjoy residential design more mm. than commercial so i've stopped accepting commercial muna mainly it's also because of the work hours when you do commercial it's like the graveyard shift so mm. past 12 midnight you have to be at the site Nico kaya eh? oh, <laughs> so more right. residential mm. um favorite project would probably be one condo i did in royal town mm. in the um they were uh expat couple in mean, uh, Balik Bayan couple, mm, yeah. senior, senior mm. citizen. And it was fun for me because their taste was more of uh, US space already. Mm. So they had a lot of interesting inputs and then they also respected my inputs. So right. when we put it all together, it turned out surprisingly really nice, mm. more nicer than I expected. Yes. They were also very easy to talk to. 
What? Because sometimes you get clients who are very difficult. Na, mm. uh, sometimes the point that they shout at you, you know. So, that's mm. part of the job naman. Right. Diba? So, you experienced, yeah. like, client shouting at you na, ma'am? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. I had this one in, in Makati. Mm. Uh, she she ended up shouting at me for the smallest thing, mm. which is repairable naman. Yeah. So, that, that's also another thing that you have to deal with, the mm. personality of yeah. the clients. So, how uh, did you, like, um handle it, like, with oh. her being, <laughs> ano? That kind of uh, client. So, of course, you cannot retaliate. The mm. respect always has to be right. there. Unless to the point that they disrespect you, then that's mm. not okay mm. anymore. But um, if it's something that can be fixed, usually what I do na lang is like, I offer a solution. Mm. So that dwell around the problem, right. just beating around the bush. You mm. offer a solution, and then they take it. If not, then... Uh, well, they, they have to solve them themselves also. Mm. Yeah. So, but so, it doesn't happen very often, the uh, Thank God. Thank God above. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, with your designs, ma'am, like, where do you find inspirations? Like, do you usually, like, before um doing a project, do you usually like scan through um the internet or like um are your designs based from your travels or like? Just simply like with your um environment. Uh oh. Um where do I get inspiration? So mm. I read a lot of articles online oh. and then magazines just mm. to keep up with, with what's happening around right. Manila around the world also because it's important for us to know what's what are the trends also in Europe, in US and Japan, everywhere, right? Mm. So so that we kind of broaden our minds to yes. the the trend outside. Mm. Um, aside from that, when you have to be more observant when you go around. So when you go to like malls or stores and then you like the design. Mm. So just observe how they executed this, what's the material, mm. how did they combine the colors nicely with the lighting. So yeah, you, you take inspiration from everywhere actually. Mm. So, now when you travel, the right? van, you right. like something. You can just take a picture and then for next time, maybe you can apply that, mm. that to your own projects. Right. But inspiration comes everywhere, not just online. Mm. It's everywhere. Mm-hmm. Like even with like what you're wearing, like you can find inspiration mm-hmm. from there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. True. Tomakin. I think no. I don't know. Shop. I okay. Makin. I'm sorry about it. Oh. Sorry, ma'am. Okay. Red Shopee yung line yan na. Yeah, open lang. Yeah. What question are we now? 12. 12? What advice would you give to your design students to dream of having their own firm in the future? Um, advice. Uh, I guess we go back again to um, it's all about you. And mm. the way you handle your problems and the way you handle your clients, mm. right? Because design keeps changing. Right. And you have so many possibilities of how to make a, a nice design. In, the, in terms of the technical sense, you already have background, a background in that, right? And I guess it's more of um, how you deal with people most of the time mm. because in, in our profession we can think something we can draw it but getting it into the actual 3d space there are so many people involved and you have to to learn how to get along with everyone mm. your suppliers your contractors um, who else clients and then with your fellow partners in your firm or whoever right so it's it's all about um yeah, trying to get along with everyone. Mm. And also, you have to just maintain that integrity. So, right. do what's right and not mm. what's, for example, you want to make a big profit agad or something. Mm. Sometimes, in, in the beginning, like, you have to take the blow. You have to, malugi ka sometimes. Mm. 
just so that you can get a nice product and please your clients. Mm. Because at the name, at, at the end of the day, your name is really why people hire you. Mm. So what, like with designing, what can you say is the best um thing about it? Like when you like after a project, like of course, um, there's always stress and problems. But after like the design, like what is the best thing about it? Um, well, the most fulfilling part is mm. when after all the blood, sweat, and tears, mm. you can finally see the whole place done. Right. You know, had it cleaned now. You put all the last minute touches mm. and everything. And then you see it; it's nice. Mm. And what I always do personally is I make a before and after photos, Aww. just so just so I can see the difference. Right, yeah. and like yeah. you can see your hard work. Yeah, mm. yeah, exactly. And then, um, well, the best part is when your clients are happy. Mm. You know? It's it's one thing to make a nice interior, but nobody is really appreciating it, mm. right? Or nobody can say that, oh, you changed my life because my home is now better mm. or my shop is now up and running yes. my business can thrive right so that, that's really what keeps me going and, mm. so was there ever a time now you cried because your clients or your client was very happy with your design or like, uh, yeah no, yeah yeah <laughs> because you were very overjoyed especially with the senior citizens oh. they get emotional so whichever you get emotional mm. so yeah, yeah. Right. Which was the most rewarding if, if mm. they're happy with the outcome. Even if it didn't turn out as nice as you mm. hoped, as your rendering is. At the end, no, it's the uh, client's happy, designer's happy. Right. <laughs> yeah. So it's really about the client, not about you. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. never about us. Yeah. Mm. Because like our task is not, oh wow, I'm magaling ako, mm. diba, or anything. Right. It's not. Uh, we're the star of the show, eh? mm. no, because we're our our task is a service. You know, we're providing a service to people. And then, <laughs> the fact when you focus on yourself, lang, then it yeah, it, it's impressive. But yeah, it, it won't get you people. anywhere, no. right? No, mm. So what can you say is your um best work ethic, like during projects? Being a workaholic. Being a workaholic. <laughs> so day in, day out, talaga, um, mm. if I think of something, forgot this, forgot that, mm. I hold it down, and um, you just have to be very detail oriented. Mm. Uh, and what else? Um, yeah, you have mm. to be very detail oriented and responsible also. Right. Um, enough to get all of the suppliers together so that we finish on time. Mm. You know, everything that we practice in school, it's like that times two in the oh, real world. <laughs> yes. Like so, can you say now with designing, uh, you're a perfectionist or like you you just go with the flow? Um, over time, your standards tend to increase. Mm. Get more exposed to to clients. So, right. at first, na papasa na ito, mm. and then right now, I think more leaning towards perfectionism because there are some things that you cannot stand. Like you see it and you cannot stand mm. it, and you want it to be done well. Yeah. So that kind of thing you develop over the years. Mm. So last question, ma'am. Um, yeah. what can you like with us, like Noel and I, like what can you advise? to us na now that we are leaning to, you know, graduating and yeah. someday we'll become like you. So what can you advise to us, ma'am? Now we can bring all throughout our journey. <laughs> okay. Um, yes. Over the years, kasi, it's been very, very hard like for me trying to get clients and all. And there are days when you're tired from the job site right. and then you're dealing with people who are difficult, or you you feel like you hit, uh, you hit an obstacle. It's um always think that there's a solution. So sometimes you just have to sleep on it, and then the next day you just keep going. Um, mm. just don't give up. So I I almost changed professions after oh, some really? of the 
some of my bad projects. Mm, and, what was your ano uh, like your option, ma'am, that time? Hmm, sorry. What, what was your option, option that time, yeah? Sorry. sorry. Like when you thought of like ano giving up na like what was your option that time? Um just uh find another field. At mm. that point, I was sick and tired already of right. the design because of uh, choosing a bad contractor. Mm. And, you know, our project dragged on for 13 months, can you believe? Mm. So, almost I a year. Like, condo fit out dragged oh. on for 13 months to, um, because of the contractor. Mm. So, I thought to myself, if this is the profession I chose, mm. maybe I'll just do something else. Mm. You know, anything. You know. So, what made then, you... What made you push through with the uh, with it's our really field? The, passion, the oh. passion for design. So if it's in you, you took this course because you really love interior design. Then you should always remember that if you have, uh, if you hit a problem and it seems like everything is crashing down already, and you have so many expectations to fulfill, then just take one thing at a time, mm. and then we'll get through with it. And then just think to yourself that next project, I'll be better. I'll do better. Mm. Yeah. Thank you so much for that wonderful advice, ma'am. Because <laughs> we really need it because we're doing our thesis now. So we really needed those words from you. Oh. Yeah. Uh-oh. So I last question. What is your advice for us, ma'am, now we're doing our thesis now? What is your thesis? Is it written or construction? All of the above. <laughs> yes. Sorry, didn't get me the name, but, um, the written thesis was um, it's just regular academic stuff. Mm. Uh, if you have to construct something, I'm not sure if you do like a booth, like an exhibit. Ah uh, no, ah uh, it's different or, from ano. Yeah, for for us, because in PSID we did an exhibit booth. Oh, it was so that was in it. life. Oh. Or, or oh, so, it's... Um, in construction, if it's group work, mm. try not to fight with your group mates. Because <laughs> I fought with my group mates and it was a lot of stress. Uh. Uh, it's not worth it. So, so good thing, I know, like, we work individual, ma'am. Our thesis is not group by group. Uh, so mm. even construction is... No, we don't have construction. Like, I know lang, um, digital. Digi- ah, yeah. okay, more of like digital renderings. Mm. Okay, so yeah. I mean, at least it's better because once we talk about construction, uh, that's that's different. Mm. Um, yeah. Um, what kind of advice? I'm not sure what your thesis is about. It. <laughs> like g- generally, like while making our thesis, like what can you advise? This is not part of the questionnaire, just personal. Uh, <laughs> Okay, okay, no, no. Um, I don't know what what is your task in the thesis is. Uh, is it like regular plates, lang? More of regular plates, but times four. <laughs> times four. Wow, okay. it's like mm. what we did for a hotel design. Mm. Um, just pace yourself. Mm. Don't get overwhelmed. Right? Yeah. Start early. Don't procrastinate. Yes. Your plates never end up nice when you procrastinate. That was rush r- rush rendering or something. Right. Uh, no. So mm-hmm. always um, start early, mm. and then you can do the hardest thing first. Do the hardest thing first, mm. so that you can reward yourself with the easy task at the end. Mm, <laughs> right. Right. And then, um, yeah, always do your best in everything, because um, how you do small things is how you tackle big things, right? So, by, there's that saying that if you can trust a person with small things, you can trust a person with big things. Right. So, yeah, if it's your last task in school, mm. just give your best, right? And, yeah. Thank you so much, Bob. You make us cry. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ma'am Geraldine. Like, okay. I know it was a very um rush thing because our deadline is on Saturday now. So, we're very thankful. Oh, yeah. Because okay. it, no, we're actually. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Called, actually. Sorry? So, 
Oh my god. god. Okay, ma'am. So, Sige, okay, thank you so much again, Mom Geraldine. We okay. hope now we can um, meet you in the future. Like, um, last question, like, where can we see, like, your designs or where can we, like, um, get access from you, like, through social media or whatever medium? Uh, you know, I'm... Bit prehistoric. I don't have Instagram. Oh, and I don't even have that's why website. when I uh, no stalked you on Instagram, Bye. I couldn't. Bye. <laughs> so uh, my only display portfolio is mm. on house. Ah, oh, so, okay. Uh, mm. So those are so far my all of my executed projects. Mm. You can check those. Okay, ma'am. Yeah, but if you want, uh, I can also send you my portfolio, mm. which is like from the very very start. Right. You know, yeah, but anyway, I have your contact number. I can call you whenever. <laughs> if you need advice, yes. Or yeah, just let me know. Yeah, thank you so much again, Ma. Thank Happy you. New Year. Yes, thank yeah. you, Ma'am. We you need to finish strong. Please, please pray okay. for us. Yes. <laughs> Thank you again, Ma'am Gerald. Uh, it means a lot to us, Yad. To Makin, any words? To Ma'am Geraldine? To Makin? I out oh, there. Any words to Ma'am Geraldine? Thank you so much again to Ma'am. You're welcome. Yeah, so okay. thank you again, ma'am. Have a good n Sorry? Take care. Take care also, ma'am. We hope to see you soon. We will visit you in Manila. Wow. Someday. <laughs> thank you, ma'am. Bye. After our interview with interior designer Oliva, it was an eye opener for me. I get to hear from an a licensed interior designer of what it is like working in the industry and the accomplishments and difficulties they have experienced. As she stated during her interview with her, she's been practicing in the industry for four years now and it was not easy. There were a lot of difficulties and hardships when she ventured on her own in the beginning, especially when there was no one backing her up. She stated that it is important to have our own trusted suppliers and contractor and to always have a healthy relationships with them and the clients. From what I have learned from our interview with her, it is that time management is really important. You can't just procrastinate and risk delaying your projects if you don't want to lose valuable clients. If I want to prove my work as an interior designer to my clients and gain their confidence in me, then I have to stop procrastinating and start working now. If I want to be successful in this industry, I have to make a name for myself and maintain a good public image to get more referrals and have some potential clients. In order for me to do all of this, I have to keep learning and keep honing my skills and also practice my convincing skills. After our interview with interior designer Oliva, I have learned that it really pays to work hard for what you really want. Because oftentimes we think that getting to our destination is just a one-time stop, when in reality, there are many stops and there will be many stops just like interior designer Oliva's experiences. After graduating from college, interior designer Oliva immediately took the board exam and she was fortunate enough to pass the first time she took it. But after four years of being an interior designer and after four years of practicing the field, there were moments she thought of giving up and just consider another field or another course as things weren't going her way, experienced bad contractors that greatly affected her projects but she handled it with grace she took the risk and got her credibility back so that's what i learned from interior designer oliva that no matter how great your design is it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if you have the best design if you have the best color scheme if you have the best um 
aesthetic it doesn't matter if you don't know how to handle the worst if you don't know how to handle your clients and your contractors because it won't get you anywhere so that's what really struck me during our interview with interior designer Oliva that in this field it's not about us designers it's always about the client and it's not making everything look nice but it's a relationship towards the client it's our sensitivity towards the client that will make us a great designer